Seven months ago, we sat on this couch and we said, let's buy a boat. And look, we have bought a, a boat! boat. talk about is how we went about buying a boat. Yeah. So first of all we needed the money. Where did the money come from? So um, we lived in a three bedroomed semi-detached house in Manchester. So we sold the house and drastically downsized. So we're now we live in a flat in Liverpool, close to the marina. So we thought we'd talk about the actual boat buying process that we went through and how we think it, it should work. Um, one of the things that we did initially early on was we identified the size of boat that we wanted. Um, that was dictated by a number of things. How big a boat could we handle? Well, the bigger the boat gets, the harder it gets to handle. Um, too small a boat is too cramped. Um, so we decided eventually about mid-30s and things like that. So we, we went and we tried a few and things like that. We tried sailing them, we went on them at shows, that sort of thing. And came bang on mid-30s, 36, 37 feet, something in that range was going to be about the right size for us. Another consideration is in an emergency. If one of us gets injured, there's no point in buying a boat that takes two of us to sail it. Because how do you get the injured party back? How do you do it? Yeah. Um, uh, I particularly uh, wanted, um, what I wanted was what I call a 246. So from my point of view this is uh, what I wanted which was two to live, four to stay, six um, at a pinch. Well, one of the other things to do is be fairly open minded. We started off the process thinking we wanted a mid 30s centre cockpit boat. We wind up with a mid 30s aft cockpit boat. Um, because when we saw it, we realised that the centre cockpits were quite low, quite cramped or very, very expensive for the same size boat. This is a lot more boat for the money than we would have got with what a centre cockpit was. Um, I was also disappointed by the quality of some of the centre cockpit ones. They were either very old or extremely creaky and they were very pleasant. I particularly loved a um, centre cockpit boat which was a moody. I really, really did love it. Um, but that particular boat was another, how many years older than this one? It was twice the age of this boat. So that was another 15 years older than this one. Um, and basically those 15 years did show... If you want a brand new boat, even a brand new boat, you still have to configure it to your own liking and put on various things to your own liking. So even a brand new boat, there'll be things that you need to do. But, so, this one does need jobs, whereas the um, Moody I loved, there was so much I needed to do, there was every single cabin, I was like, well that needs doing, that needs doing, that needs doing. It was a project boat. It was a project boat, and if we were interested in a project boat, that would have been the boat for us, because I loved it, you loved it, mm -hmm. but we weren't that keen on the amount of work no, we we needed. <laughs> One other thing we decided to do was to spend the maximum amount of money we could afford on the boat. Uh, we know several people who bought very cheap boats. So you then spent an absolute fortune in time and money getting them up to scratch. And the people we know are actually spending more on the boat than what we have purchased this one for. And this one's pretty much ready to go. You know, this particular boat comes with three reefs, which is exactly what I would have wanted uh, so that uh, especially uh, we're going to be sailing around uh, the UK you really do need those extra reefs uh, this boat already comes with it but you could be spending quite a bit of money just to put the, the that in so as an example one of the things we did and I'm just going to name a number here for to make my arithmetic easy let's say you're spending 50,000 that could be dollars could be pound could be pesos whatever it is that you have for currency but if you've got 50,000 to spend, say, take a fifth of it, 10,000, put it to one side. That's your fixer-upper fund. The other 40,000 is your maximum spend on the boat. So you find the model and type of the boat you're looking for, 
40 is the maximum you're going to spend on it. Also, uh, when you've chosen your budget of uh, 40,000, if um, when you're looking at the boat, there are things that have to be done, like uh, in this particular boat, because it's 15 years old, uh, the standing rigging needs to be sorted out. We phoned up riggers and we said to them, how much the standing rigging replacement on Bavaria 36? They all gave us about the same figure of about 2,000 points. Um, put it to other things. If there's a fault with the engine, how much does the engine cost to replace? If you buy an extremely cheap boat, you might have to put an engine in. Well, that's £5,000. For a boat of this size, it's a £5,000 engine. Yeah, so that would have to be added into the price. Um, other things. One of the boats we looked at didn't have a windlass. Well, a windlass is at least £800. Call it a 1000 And if you're going to get somebody to install it, you have to pay them. You'll have to run cabling and switches in, so that's maybe another £1,000. So a windlass is maybe a thousand to two thousand, call it fifteen hundred. And so on that particular boat it needed a windlass, it needed new standing rigging. So, you know, that's three and a half thousand off the price that they're asking for you. And you can turn around and just about say, I'm sorry, but your boat needs these things too, it's mm. o it's overpriced at the present price. The um that particular boat also didn't come with the dinghy. This one does come with the dinghy. So there was other other things that you're thinking, well, I've got to buy a dinghy. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, our dinghy might not be the best in the world, but at least we've got one. We've got a starting point. How much does a dinghy cost? How much does an outboard cost? Find out before you go boat hunting. Mm. If it's going to be like £3,000 for a dinghy and outboard, and you're looking at a boat that doesn't have it, well, deduct that off your price you're offering. Don't pay for things you're not getting. Mm. But you, what we're saying here is decide exactly what it is that you need. Like, for instance, we needed a dinghy. You know, we're going to hopefully be we're going to be anchoring out a lot, so we need a dinghy. Spend some time doing your research on YouTube, watch surveys, see what surveyors do, and then just apply the same things. Start at the front of the boat, work your way to the back. Make sure there's no hollow signs in the deck. Make sure there's no squidgy signs in the deck. Look at the rigging. Look for things that are broken. You know, if you can find them, a surveyor can find them, but he'll charge you. What do you want the surveyor for? is to find things you couldn't find. In this particular boat, I looked at chain plates, I looked at the um, uh, bolts uh, downstairs, keel boats, I looked at the engines, I liked to see if I could get, if they could start the engines, uh, and I, I basically, if, if they could start the engine, then I started the engine. Um, I looked at all sorts of things. There was, I looked at water tanks, Everything I could think of that I looked at. Yep. So to summarise, we set our budget, we decided the type of boats we wanted to have, we then went looking for boats that matched that budget, we informed ourselves about the most likely replacements, things like sails, things like standing rigging, anchors, dinghies, engines, the things that are most likely to be messed up on an older boat. Uh, we found out the prices for all of them. Um, we found out how to spot the common flaws, you know, bulkheads that are loose, decks that are spongy, that sort of thing. Uh, hollow signs inside things that aren't supposed to sound hollow. Um, and the upshot of that was that when we looked at a boat, we could say to the broker, I'm sorry, it's got this, it's got that, it's got the other, and we could put an offer in and we could say, we're reducing our offer by this amount of money because it's got this, 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 and this, and we've already priced it up. The other thing um, that is very important that you should get done is a test sale. That was very, very um, good for us. Mm. It introduced us to this particular boat systems. I've never been in two boats of the same model where things were done the same way because over the years the captains who have owned them modify them to suit their own way of doing things. So we've learned exactly how this boat is manoeuvred, how this boat is done, where, where everything is. The owners were very good to us and they showed us everything and they took us through everything and we had a nice day for it. Um, at the minute it's blowing a gale outside, which is part of sitting here taking YouTube videos. I think uh, if they were doing a test sale today, wouldn't have even got out of the harbour. harbour. Yeah. But um, yeah, I agree with the test sale. Um, they showed us how they did the reefing. Um, there was a lot of different systems on board, like for instance the dinghy. How did they actually raise the dinghy? Um, that took at least 15-20 minutes just to show us how to do it because, you know, every step of the way they were showing us. Um, they even showed us how to um, uh, clean 
the logger underneath um, because that's something that you need to clean on a regular basis so they showed us how to do that um, electrical systems um, the engine of course so doing that test sale it just meant that we could go through the systems and it was literally just loads of them wasn't it baby it was a very good fast hard we, we, you know, we were busy for the entirety of time we were there. Yeah. And so here we are, seven months on, on our boat. Yep. Yeah. We've uh, we've got the boat. I've got an idea. Oh yeah. Let's sell everything we own about house. No. <laughs> <laughs>